All right, good afternoon to you. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramisha Shea with a ton of updates, a lot of new information on a monstrous, potentially devastating and catastrophic hurricane that has developed in the southwestern Gulf of Mexico. This wasn't even a tropical system back on Friday evening, Friday night. It developed over the weekend and now it is a major, very dangerous category five hurricane. I'm talking about Milton. So let me show you where we've been so far this season and where we are now. As you can see, we are now up to 13 named storms. Out of those, we've had nine hurricanes, and now we've had four major hurricanes, including Barrel, which of course hit Houston back on July 8th as an 80 mile per hour category one hurricane. But before it hit Houston, it did briefly strengthen to a category five major hurricane. We also had Helene that of course just barreled through the big bend of Florida, caused catastrophic flooding across parts of the Appalachians, Western North Carolina, Eastern Tennessee. That one strengthened to a major category four hurricane. Kirk, a major category four hurricane at one point. And now we have Milton that has rapidly intensified at 4 a.m. this morning. It had 100 mile per hour winds by this afternoon winds up to 175 miles per hour. And as of the latest update a few minutes ago, winds now up to 180 miles per hour. So that's a really strong category five. That is as bad as it gets. So we are talking about worst case scenario with a nearly perfectly symmetrical hurricane churning out there in the southwestern Gulf of Mexico. Nadine is the next name on the list and then we would have Oscar, Patty, Raphael, but hopefully things will simmer down and calm down pretty soon across the Atlantic Basin because it has just been super busy and rough these last few weeks. All right, we're looking at a live view of Clearwater Beach. This is in Florida where they're expecting maybe as much as 8 to 12 feet of storm surge and with Milton getting even stronger, it could be even higher than that. So this is an area that is just to the south of the Tampa St. Pete area on that western Florida Gulf Coast. And that is the area where we are very concerned about the potential for some catastrophic damage. There are already mass evacuations going on across parts of the Florida Peninsula in preparation for this monstrous storm, this major hurricane named Milton. So we are closely tracking Milton. You can see that it is very healthy, very symmetrical. You can see a well-defined eye. We've got a lot of heat, very quiet weather here, lots of sunshine in Southeast Texas with near record temps, but dry air, quiet weather in place. Over towards Florida though, they're already feeling the effects with flood watches already out already starting to get some of those bands of heavy rain, but that is nothing compared to what Milton could potentially bring to that Florida Gulf Coast. Here's another view with our visible satellite, and you can see all of those clouds just circulating around that very well-defined eye there, and it is a storm, a hurricane that is becoming even more organized hour by hour. That pressure has just crashed in this system over the last 24 hours and that has allowed the wind speeds to really intensify to really get strong and that is what we are dealing with as we go through the rest of today tonight we'll be tracking a very dangerous hurricane over the next few days all right so let's get to the latest track from the national hurricane center this is the latest as of the 4 p.m advisory location 21.8 degrees north 90.8 degrees west movement is to the east at 10 miles per hour and that pressure down to around 905 millibars. That is super low pressure for a hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico. And you can clearly see that number five, that means it is as bad as it gets. That Saffir Simpson scale goes from a category one all the way up to a category five. And we are talking about a five right now with, check this out, 180 mile per hour wind. So this is crazy. You rarely see a hurricane get this strong in the Gulf of Mexico with 180 mile per hour winds. 
so that is why we are so concerned about what Hurricane Milton could potentially do over the next few days as it approaches Florida. Before it gets to Florida, it's going to brush by the Yucatan Peninsula. It's going to likely push just to the north of the Yucatan Peninsula. So if you had vacation plans in Cancun, likely some impacts over the next 24 hours from Milton, but it's not going to be a direct hit. However, as we go into Wednesday, Wednesday evening, Wednesday night, that is when the models are indicating that Milton will likely start to make landfall, like likely around 7, 8, 9 p.m. as we go into Wednesday evening. And then that eye pushing on shore during the overnight hours, late Wednesday into Thursday. Here's a little bit of good news. If there is any good news with Hurricane Milton, I do think it will run into an environment that's going to be less favorable for it to maintain that super strong intensity. So it likely will start to weaken a bit as it moves closer to that Florida western coast, that Gulf Coast of Florida. Back storms, obviously this is really rare, but I can only imagine the strain resources that it creates on, on your people resources, mm -hmm. your firefighters, police officers, all of your, in, your emergency management team. Everybody has to be exhausted. Are you getting any sort of... 1 a.m. Thursday. After that, it rolls across the Florida Peninsula and likely pushes right over the city of Orlando, and then it should quickly move offshore and away from Florida. The good news is that it is not going to sit over Florida for several days, but by then the damage will be done. A system that strong, even as a category three, is still a major hurricane and could still bring some deadly storm surge, maybe 12 feet or higher to areas where millions of people live, including Tampa Bay and also over towards Orlando. Now, this is something that I kind of dug up from the history books, and this is very interesting because Many of you, if you live in the Houston area or Beaumont, anywhere across Southeast Texas, if you've lived here for a while, you will remember what Hurricane Rita did. Hurricane Rita was a historic system that was in the Gulf of Mexico and before Milton, it was actually the strongest hurricane ever recorded in the Gulf of Mexico. Back on September 22nd, 2005, Hurricane Rita strengthened all the way to 180 miles per hour with those maximum sustained winds. However, we now have a tie because now Hurricane Milton is up to 180 mile per hour winds as of that latest 4 p.m. advisory. So both of these hurricanes will go down in the history books. We're talking about some of the strongest ever in the Gulf of Mexico. Of course, you know, Rita did weaken to a category three before it made landfall along the Gulf Coast and brought still some major impacts to Texas and Louisiana. But it certainly was a very dangerous storm and it still did a lot of damage. We are expecting Milton to do the same thing to parts of Florida. As far as that wind scale, the hurricane wind scale, it's called the Saffir Simpson scale. And of course, this measures what type of wind damage these hurricanes can do. And we're talking about worst case scenario with a category five. Category five means wind speeds around 157 miles per hour or greater. Hurricane Milton is already at 180 miles per hour. So it's not like we have a category six or category seven. It's as bad as it gets. And if it keeps strengthening, it's just getting worse and worse. Maybe unprecedented damage potential with a hurricane like that. So that is why we are so concerned about what Milton could potentially do. Check this out. This gives you an idea of just how quickly Milton has strengthened. Only 50 mile per hour winds in Milton as of 4 a.m. yesterday. That was Sunday morning. It wasn't even a hurricane. It was just a tropical storm churning out there in the southwestern Gulf of Mexico. This morning it had strengthened to a category two hurricane around 4 a.m. And then this afternoon, category five plus, we're talking about 157 plus mile per hour winds, of course, now up to 180 miles per hour. So this is certainly a very dangerous system that could do a lot of damage to the state of Florida. I want to show you this graphic as well, because these are hurricanes since 1850, and these are storms that have come within about 100 miles of Tampa. Of course, Tampa Bay, the area directly in the path of Hurricane Milton. So you can see that since 1850, we've had several hurricanes in and around the Tampa area, but most of them have originated from 
other locations other than the southwestern Gulf of Mexico. We've only had about two hurricanes since records have been kept that have originated in the southwestern Gulf of Mexico. So you can see these two lines here and they were only around category one, category two strength, not category four or category five like Milton is right now. So that gives you an idea of just how rare this is for a tropical system to develop in the southwestern Gulf and to push towards the Tampa area. So this is a very rare scenario, very rare situation, and we are certainly concerned for all of those people, over 3 million people that live in the Tampa Bay, St. Petersburg area. So this is certainly very scary for them, and a lot of people are already getting out of town as quickly as they can. Here's a look at that National Hurricane Center forecast for Milton, still showing it at category five status as it rolls just to the north of the Yucatan Peninsula as we go into tonight, into Tuesday. It maintains that strength for the most part. Notice getting close to Tampa Bay Wednesday night, right around 8 39 o'clock, still as a category four. So we'll have to wait and see if it can keep that strength, but it likely will be a category four or a very strong category three for that Wednesday night, early Thursday morning landfall. So notice right around Thursday morning, late, late Wednesday, early Thursday, still a strong category three, at least with this particular forecast with 125 mile per hour winds. And then it weakens to a category one as it pushes off of the other coast of Florida, the eastern coast of Florida, and then it weakens as it moves away from Florida. But Wednesday and Thursday will definitely be the days that Florida will likely get hammered from this system. I want to show you the spaghetti model plots and you can see that they are pretty much in agreement that yes, it is going to hit Florida, but what part of Florida will Milton hit? Well, these spaghetti model plots, these computer models, basically have it hitting from just north of Tampa all the way to just south of Fort Myers. So Tampa, Fort Myers, definitely in that danger zone for that life-threatening storm surge, that potential for several inches of rain, and also the threat for damaging, potentially catastrophic wind as well. So we've got a lot to worry about when it comes to Hurricane Milton. So we will continue to monitor things closely. It definitely appears that we do have the potential for a lot of devastation from this system, and we are going to be watching it as we go through the next several days. Hopefully we will get this thing out of here quickly, but like I said, it is certainly going to be something that we will be monitoring closely. I do want to tell you that we do have hurricane watches and hurricane warnings out with this system and we will continue to monitor the additional alerts, the additional warnings that likely will be coming out. All right, I do want to show you our exclusive Fox model future cast and it shows Milton gathering itself, gaining strength briefly, at least through this evening, then gradually becoming a little bit weaker as it runs into maybe a little more wind shear and environment not quite as favorable for development, but it is still going to be a monster of a hurricane as it approaches the Florida coast, likely Tampa Bay, Sarasota, maybe down around Fort Myers, all in that danger zone to get hit by Hurricane Milton. So this is around 7 p.m. Wednesday evening, and you can see that eye wall starting to get closer to that Florida Gulf Coast. So notice right around late Wednesday night, early Thursday morning, 3, 4, 5 a.m. Thursday, it is making landfall. The Fox model having it make that landfall a little bit slower than some of the other models, but basically between Wednesday evening and Thursday morning, I think Florida will be getting the worst of it, especially around Tampa Bay, Bradenton, and also around the St. Pete area as well. After it leaves those spots, it's gonna roll right over Orlando Thursday morning and then quickly push offshore Thursday afternoon and evening. But like I said, the damage will be done. The potential for that storm surge up to 12 feet or higher, five to 10 inches of rainfall and the hurricane force winds over 100 miles per hour could do widespread damage. A ton of power outages, flood potential, and the storm surge threat. So folks are doing the right thing to get out of Dodge, get out of town, because this is, like I said, about as bad as it gets. So of course, we'll continue to closely track Hurricane Milton 
heading towards Florida, but we've also got a few other systems we need to watch as well. This one just popped up on us this afternoon. This is another potential for tropical development, and this is right off of that southeastern Florida coast, just south and east of Miami. It's only a low 10% chance for development, but it's this area that you see over South Florida, that disorganized area of showers and storms, low chance to become a tropical depression or tropical storm as it moves northeast towards the Bahamas and also eventually towards Bermuda if it makes it that far. So we'll be closely monitoring that. Also, we still have Hurricane Leslie out in the central Atlantic. It is still fairly powerful with 80 mile per hour winds, maximum wind gust of 100 miles per hour, movement to the northwest at 14 miles per hour. So it's holding together nicely. Gradually expect it to weaken a bit as we go into the next few days, and it likely will make more of a turn to the north by the end of the week and stay away from the U.S. It's a good thing because we are dealing with enough. Of course, we've recently had Hurricane Helene blast through Florida and the Carolinas. Now we have Hurricane Milton heading towards Florida, so we don't need Leslie as well. Good news with Kirk is that it is now post-tropical. It's still out there in the Atlantic, but it has lost tropical characteristics, but it's still a very powerful post-tropical system with 75 mile per hour wind. So it is moving into cooler water now, however, the models have it maintaining decent strength over the next several days and likely by the middle of the week it could be rolling right into the area of Paris just to the south and east of London. So we do have the potential for some possible impacts to Paris as post tropical cyclone Kirk heads that way, but at least it will be a little bit weaker by then with winds around 40 miles per hour. So we are monitoring several systems, but of course the most that we are concerned about, the one we are most concerned about rather, would be Milton, which is a monstrous category five hurricane in the southwestern Gulf. Of course, we are into the month of October where typically the first few weeks of October can still be pretty busy with our hurricane season. And we are getting just that, a lot of action out there, but hopefully things will start to calm down by the end of October and into November. Of course, hurricane season officially goes all the way through November 30th, so don't let your guard down even though our weather here in Houston Southeast Texas expect it to remain very quiet over the next several days you never know things can pop up in the tropics so we are going to still be monitoring things closely and of course if you are in the path of Milton do what you can to try to get out of the way of Milton try to evacuate if you are in an evacuation zone if you are planning to stay just be extremely careful and plan on the potential for a lot of damage from that wind, a lot of structural damage to homes, to vehicles, power outages will be widespread and it's just not going to be a good situation. So if you can get out, my advice will be to try to get out of harm's way while you can, because this is not going to be a storm. You really want to ride out because it will be very scary. All right, that will do it for your tropical update for today. Hopefully we can get things to calm down in the tropics soon, but of course we'll continue to keep you updated on Hurricane Milton, Category 5 Hurricane Milton, day by day, every afternoon. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramesha Shade. Stay